Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, February 15th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from San Francisco, California. Microsoft had an interesting surprise for us today. It was supposed to be Patch Tuesday, but essentially with an hour or two to go until we expected Microsoft to release this month's patches, they canceled Patch Tuesday. Now, they stated that they discovered some issue with this month's patches, and that's why they are delaying them. There is no new date at which we should expect these updates could be as late as March. In the past, Microsoft occasionally has not released individual patches that turned out to cause some odd side effects in the last minute, but they never really cancel an entire patch Tuesday. This could be a little bit a side effect of uh, the way they're planning to do things going forward where they are releasing these large monolithic uh, monthly patches and of course if one of the issues they're fixing within one of these large patches does cause problems they may not be able to remove that patch quickly enough and as a result have then like today to cancel the entire patch Tuesday. Adobe on the other hand did release an update for Flash. Of course, the interesting part now is that you don't necessarily have the accompanying update for Edge and in Explorer 11 from Microsoft. And to make up for the missing Microsoft patch Tuesday, we do have an update from IBM for WebSphere. It does fix a cross-site scripting vulnerability that can be used to leak credentials from trusted sessions. And you should not delay patching this one while it's only a cross-site scripting vulnerability. Remember, cross-site scripting vulnerabilities are often underestimated. They do, in the end, allow complete control over the browser for any user visiting a vulnerable site. Sophisticated targeted attacks are not always about zero days, but they're really more about how much work an attacker is doing in order to get a victim to click on a link. The latest example that has been pretty nice documented is what has become known as Operation Kingfish. It's a target attack against activists that are dealing with migrant workers from Nepal in Qatar and uh, these uh, activists have been attacked with a fairly complete social media profiles that were then used to lure these activists into believing that the individual was actually trying to help them out and uh, then email links were used to trick the activists to log into fake Google sites. And then, of course, the credentials being stolen here were then used to read and intercept email or send additional links to other activists. So in general, the technique used here didn't even require an exploit per se, just required that the attacker set up a Google phishing site and then convinced the victim into clicking on the link. But in order to convince the victim, they did quite a bit of work and established social media accounts with, in some parts, years of history. It's not clear if these social media accounts were established just for the purpose of spear phishing or if these are actual social media accounts that were just compromised and then abused by the attacker in this case. As usual, you can find a link to the complete blog post in the show notes. And one of the hard problems a lot of developers are struggling with uh, is the serialization and deserialization of complex objects. And it doesn't really matter how you express it, if you're using XML, JSON, or whatnot else, seems uh, nobody really can get it quite right. The latest example is the Node Serialize module that can be used as part of Node.js. The deserialization feature here does have a bug that can lead to remote code execution. And a blog posted yesterday does show nicely how 
blood bugs like this can be exploited. In particular for pen testers, it's really important to understand how to find these vulnerabilities because you will see more and more of that as uh, applications are pushing these large and complex objects uh, forth and back. And also as a developer, of course, you do want to see how to prevent mistakes like this. Well, and that's it for today. On Wednesday, of course, I'll be speaking at RSA as part of our panel with Ed and Mike and Alan will talk about the seven most dangerous attacks again and what's coming next, 10.30 in the Moscone West on the third floor. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Or if I see you at RSA, I usually have a couple of ISC stickers with me, so just ask for them.